Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be looking at forces on inclined planes. And what we see here is that we have a car that is at rest on a 15 degree incline. If the mass of the car is 1,000 kilograms, what is the force of friction? So check this out, dudes. We got a car that is chilling out at rest. That means it's not moving on a 15 degree hill. The mass of the car is 1,000 kilograms. And the question is asking, what is the force of friction? Now, here is the deal. A car that is at rest is going to have balanced forces. The net force is going to be equal to zero. If the net force is zero, every force must be balanced out. Now, the problem begins by drawing a free body diagram. And as you see, I've already started drawing the free body diagram. And we're going to continue to do so. So I have my 15 degree angle. And I know that's not probably the best 15 degree angle, but it, it's not bad. All right, now I'm going to draw my car, and I'm going to draw my car as, as a box. There it is. That's my car right there. And that's a good-looking car. So we have a car at rest. It's not moving on our 15-degree incline. We have to draw the forces present, the forces that are acting on this object. And the first force that's acting, always, we know, is going to be the force of gravity, and that's going to equal to the mass times acceleration due to gravity. We got that working for us. We also have the normal force. The normal force is not always straight up and down, but rather perpendicular to the surface of the object. And I'm trying to do a good job of drawing a straight line there and making that 90 degrees to the surface. It's supposed to be perpendicular. Normal forces are often called perpendicular forces. And then we also have working on this object the force of friction. So I have friction going in the opposite direction that the object wants to be moving in, which is downhill. So any object that is at rest, force of friction is playing a big case when the object is on an incline. Now we're going to resolve the first thing here, which is force of gravity. So the force of gravity is going to be equal to the mass, which the problem tells us is 1,000 kilograms multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. We're going to use negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And this is going to give us an FG of negative 98,000 newtons. So awesome. We already got our gravity taken care of. Negative 98,000 newtons. The thing here though, guys, you have to understand with an inclined plane, in order to discuss a net force, we need to have forces on the same axis. Now right now, there's nothing on gravity's up and down axis. So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about two terms, parallel and perpendicular. Now, I'm going to draw a little triangle up in this corner because I don't want to ruin my current triangle here. When I say perpendicular, I'm going to be referencing this plane right here, this plane. So I want to say which forces are actually perpendicular to the plane, meaning upwards or downwards that way. And you'll notice they're perpendicular there at right angles. So we're going to look at forces that are perpendicular because we have to compare forces that are on the same plane of existence. And we're also going to look at forces that are parallel. And the forces that are going to be parallel are parallel to the surface. Everything I'm talking about is relative to the surface. And right now you see one of my parallel forces is the force of friction. And the other parallel force we're going to see in a second is courtesy of the force of gravity. So that's what we're kind of looking at, guys. You know, I want to erase this to get this out of the way, so in case we need to have some work drawn in the corner, so that's about to disappear. Next thing we need to do is take this force of gravity. This is my gravity force right here. That's the weight of the object. We said it was negative 98,000 newtons. Now, we're going to make a triangle out of this. We're going to break it up into its components. The components being, we're going to make a triangle, and we're looking at an X component and a Y component, or rather, a perpendicular and a parallel component. Now, the perpendicular component to this is going to come directly off of our slope and go backwards. Now gravity is pulling on the object into the slope. That's what it is doing. It is exerting a force pulling it into the slope, but it's also exerting some of its force downhill. And the downhill portion is doing this. It's exerting the actually downhill. And it's nothing more than me drawing like a, a line up here too. But I'm just going to draw it down here because I like how the triangle looks. So here I have a triangle. This is supposed to be 90 degrees, just so you know. If this is 15 degrees, then this angle inside of here is also 15 degrees. Now, we've already identified the force of gravity, the long hypotenuse of my triangle, to be negative 98,000 
newtons. And that is this right here. So crystal clear. That is negative 98,000 newtons. We're going to use that to find out what is my force of gravity that is perpendicular and what is my force of gravity that is parallel. Let's rock this out, dudes. In order to use them, we're going to need some trig functions. And let's start off with the force perpendicular. We have a formula in order to find the force, perp the force perpendicular, and that's going to be mg cosine of theta. Now, we've already calculated out the mass times gravity. That's the weight. So it's really fg cosine theta. That's another way to say it. We said that was negative 98,000. Now, for our purposes, guys, we're just going to use 98,000. 98,000 newtons times the cosine of theta. And theta is 15. It's going to match the angle of the incline. So we're going to have cosine of 15 degrees. So when you plug and chug the numbers, make sure you can do these numbers as well on your calculator. It's going to be 98,000 times the cosine of 15 and the answer is going to be 94,661 newtons. What does that represent? That represents the force perpendicular. So the force perpendicular is 94,661 newtons. We're going to call that negative because right, it's going kind of downward. The next thing we're going to do now is calculate out the force parallel. The force parallel has a similar formula and it's mass times gravity times the sine of theta. And we plug the mass times gravity. We said before that was negative 98,000 or 98,000. So it works in our calculator, newtons, times the sine of that 15 degree incline. All right, dudes, crunch the numbers. And I'm getting a number that sounds kind of right to me. It looks like 25,000, 300 and 64 newtons. That is going to be this right here. That is my force parallel. So the force parallel is going to be equal to 25,000. In this case, it's going to be a, a negative because it is going down the hill. It's pulling it down the hill. I have a negative 25,364. Newtons. And that is what this is. That is this component. That is what gravity is doing. It's pulling it downhill. I know I express it in a triangle down here, but really that's what I'm talking about. So really this downhill portion here is my force parallel, and that is 25,364 newtons. That was a negative. Now here's the deal, dudes. Force normal is going to be equal to this, the force perpendicular. It's an equal and opposite. So gravity is pulling into the slope with a force of negative 94,661 newtons. The force is, uh, the surface is responding with an equal and opposite, so the normal is going to be positive 94,661 newtons. The question coming from the beginning and the get-go is, what is the force friction? Well, this all comes from this. The car is at rest. Any object that is, that is at rest will have balanced forces. We only have a few forces at play here. You know, the normal is balanced out by the force of gravity, the force perpendicular, going into the slope. Friction, therefore, must be balanced with the downhill portion of gravity, so therefore friction must be the same as the downhill or the force parallel due to gravity, which is 25,000... 364 newtons. That's awesome, guys. We, we went all the way there. We found the force of friction. You know, I'm going to take this one step further. I hope, I hope you don't mind. I want to find out what is the coefficient of friction. You know, what's happening on this surface here? What is my mu value? And a lot of problems, I'm going to ask you that anyway. So why don't we just do it, even though it's not asked for in the problem? And we're going to use this formula. Force friction is going to equal the coefficient of friction times a normal force. And we'll just start labeling these up here. 25,364 newtons, that's the force of friction, equals mu times a normal force. And the normal force in this case is 94,661 newtons. So let's divide 25,364 by the 994, 661, 
and algebraically solve for my coefficient of friction. So the coefficient of friction is going to be z 0 0.268 is my coefficient of friction. All right, guys, that involves our program for today. Once again, this deals with a car that is at rest. It's a little different if the car is accelerating downhill. If that's the case, then we have to use the, the F net equals mass times acceleration. But because that wasn't expressed, we're simply dealing with a nice balance of forces. All right, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Best wishes on these problems. Peace.